Hello again. Uh, today is the 22nd of February 2015 and this video is about the first card in the Celtic Cross, what it means and how to interpret it. And I'm going to give some examples at the end and an exercise, something you can use for yourself to become more comfortable with cards generally. And I want to keep it simple, partly for the for the reader so you have less to get confused about and partly for the questioner. Um, because the questioner is there and they want to have a better chance of seeing things clearly. So they probably want an answer in plain language so they can understand what's going on. So let's help them and keep it simple. So my original thought was to deal with other people's sets of meanings and talk a bit about why I think they're confusing or not so good. But it's better to spend time on what is useful instead of what isn't. So... I'd like to go for what is straightforward and give examples so you can become comfortable with this particular spread. That doesn't happen, though, when you're given multiple possibilities for any position, right? Because then you've got to decide which one is right or which one to use for the question. Um, the, it, it's a bit like you, you look in a tarot book and you find... 15 different meanings for a particular card, and you've got to choose the right one. If at the same time you go to a book or a website on the Celtic Cross and you've got 15 possibilities for the first card, which one do you choose? There's actually a site that gives four categories and 19 meanings for the first position in the spread, and I found it very confusing. So the person who put the site together may have thought it was a good idea and helpful, um, to give you different ways of thinking about the card, but I think it's a bit of a jumble. So let's keep it simple and say, the first card shows the atmosphere surrounding the question. Just that, the atmosphere surrounding the question. It's not the atmosphere surrounding the question as the questioner perceives it, or as it relates to the questioner. Because I'm going to suggest that in the beginning, or with the first card, you forget about the questioner and just get an idea of the atmosphere. And the thing is, you already know atmospheres. You know that Monday is different from Friday. The atmosphere on a Monday, the atmosphere on the first day of the working week, isn't the same as the atmosphere on Friday afternoon. You know, when people are winding down and they're taking off early and getting ready to enjoy the weekend. There are also some people who don't like Fridays because it's the weekend and they would rather be back at work and wish it were Monday again. And that some people are like that as well. But it's the point is, the atmosphere is different on different days, and we know what we know this. We also know that we may not like Mondays, but we can still have a productive day. So in the same way, the atmosphere surrounding the question shown by the first card may may be unpleasant. But you don't have to be controlled by it. You can still achieve something in spite of um, a poor or difficult starting point shown by the first card. Um, so when you know when you know the atmosphere that you're in or that you're dealing with, you can know what's going to happen, what will develop, or what can be developed, or what naturally belongs in that atmosphere, or what you have to overcome. Um, if everybody's panicking, right, you have to settle them down. Otherwise, it's, it's chaos. Whereas if everybody is psyched up and ready to go, you can talk about future plans and what you're going to do. So we do what we can with this first card, remembering that there, there are nine other cards that are going to come afterward that can... Um, maybe change or develop our understanding of this first card. But if the first card show, showing the atmosphere, um, it kind of sets the tone for the answer. Because if it's a card of confidence and optimism and ability and is upright, then a lot is possible and much can be done, right? depending on the other cards that come up. But if the first card shows upset and disappointment and lack of belief, or a sense of doom and being jinxed, then evil, even simple things can seem impossible. So if you think of a friend who's had bad news, but still is still upbeat, 
You know they're going to dig in their heels and get over the obstacle and they'll get to wherever it is they're going. Then I remember somebody else who had bad news and was devastated by it. Right, so first you've got to get them over the upset before you can before they can move on. So you maybe have to help them rebuild their confidence. And that takes time before they can then move on. But with the first person who remained upbeat, this first step of rebuilding confidence isn't necessary. So they can they can start right away with implementing changes or setting things up again. So in the same way, I think, the first card in the spread um, that shows the atmosphere surrounding the question, um, it, it can... If, if we know that card, if we see it as showing the atmosphere, we can know what state the questioner is dealing with. So we're not trying to, or we're not having to figure out the meaning of the heart of the matter, or the questioner's state of mind, or the inner or the outer present environment of the, of the questioner. If somebody's worried and asks a question about that, that worry, then they're kind of involved with um, with it or trapped in their concern or in their current thoughts about the situation and what it is and what it means and what it can become. They can have a kind of tunnel vision right? and they're sort of trapped within an unhappy or unfortunate state of mind. But if we look in the first card as the atmosphere, we don't start with them and their state of mind, we start with the atmosphere and talk generally about it. So this can take the question's mind off the dismay that they think is real. So the first card sets the scene or the background against which the drama is, of the rest of the cards is going to unfold. It's a bit like the opening credits in a movie. Nothing has happened yet that directly involves the actors. But Talking about the atmosphere means we're not having the questioner, we're not expecting the questioner to deal head on with the problem or make the question face up to reality or face their fears with no introduction. Instead, if you talk about the card showing uh, as being the atmosphere, you're being general. You're talking generally and maybe you're introducing some peace of mind or peace into the equation or into the scene, or giving the question something different to think about, or planting seeds of possibility into the mind, so the questioner knows that he or she can be different, or can have a different expectation when you get to the actual problem, or the behavior, or the situation that is upsetting, or worrying, or causing the problem. Because they, 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 they can be sitting there with a kind of with, with certain expectations because they're afraid. But if you talk generally, you can help them out of that trapped state of mind. And that's valuable for later on during the reading. Because what, what you say can remind them of something they'd forgotten. Um, or maybe something they'd disregarded or thought unimportant. Or they had easily dismissed because of their defeated state of mind. Because you know when you're feeling miserable or feeling low, that um, you look at your situation, it's easy to, to ignore or dismiss possibilities just because you're in a bad state of mind. And the question can be like that as well. So talking generally can really free up um, and, and get the reading off to a good start. There's all sorts of benefits from treating the first card as the atmosphere. So think of a friend, um, they're upset. You know, they, they come and visit you because they're upset. You don't immediately sit them down and start dealing with solutions for their problem. You, you Maybe you give them some tea or coffee or something and you, you get them settled down. Or a movie starts with an introduction and you know who, who the cast is and you get some background scenes and you get some music to set the scene before we get to the action. And in the same way, we can begin a Celtic cross with an introduction, a general setting of the scene. So if, you, if the first card shows fear, right, and you say the atmosphere is one of fear, so people are afraid, 
So the questioner can think, oh, okay, so I'm not the only one who's afraid. So maybe these other people were adding to the general fearfulness that I've been living with. So you say something about the general atmosphere and the question is going to react to whatever you say and it can calm them down because they realize, okay, I wasn't the only one who was afraid. Or it can reassure them. Or it can make them think of possibilities. Or it can make them admit to themselves that a certain outcome isn't just a dream but is actually possible. Right? Because they, they can have thought, I'd like to do this but you know, it's not going to happen. But if you, if the first card's a world and you talk about how much is possible, that can think, okay, well, maybe that idea I had isn't so outrageous after all and I can solve the problem. So by talking generally for that first card, you can reassure them. So they, they will then look with more confidence to the cards that come up. Or maybe they're nervous about what you're going to, or what they're going to hear of what they're going to be told. So by talking generally with the first card, it gives you the chance to put them at ease, right, or to relax them. So, th and because if you're, if you're worried, you can have a kind of closed mind, so you don't hear what people say, right, or you don't take in what they're telling you. So the first card is the atmosphere, and you talk generally about it. That can relax the person or put them in a state of mind where they can actually hear what you're saying, or where they're able to pay attention to what you're saying, or they can start to come up with their own solutions so that they're less closed to possibilities and they get the idea that they're not actually doomed. So let, if, if we look at a couple of cards and see if we can come up with some examples of actual atmospheres and what, how a card would tell you about the kind of atmosphere you're dealing with. So I'll give you an idea or two, but you can come up with your own ideas or take further um, the starting point that I'm going to give you. And I'm going to suggest that you try this method as well. So what you do is you shuffle for a minute or two, then take the top card and think about what sort of atmosphere it shows, no matter what the question. So I've, I've, I've got a cut deck here and I'll shuffle, but before I actually began taping this, um, I shuffled and, and the first card I got was the star reverse. And I said, that's quite interesting because, so let, let's say the atmosphere is the star reversed. The star is hope and inspiration, but it's upside down. So it's a bit like the atmosphere is one where there's hope and optimism for the future, but it's upside down. There's a little niggling doubt as well. So yes, you think things are going to work out, but at the same time, part of you doesn't quite trust it. So it can mean that good cards in the spread, the questioner can see, okay, that's possible or that's a good idea or whatever it happens to be. But part of them is a little voice is saying, yeah, you know, it's not going to work. So with the star reversed, there's hope, but there's also a little niggling doubt. And that's what the reader is going to have to deal with throughout the course of the reading or throughout the course of the spread. So I shuffle and get a uh, top card is, okay, the devil, okay? So what kind of atmosphere is the devil? Temptation. So people, people are going to want to do what they know they ought not to do, or they're going to want what they ought not to want. And they're going to be willing to, forget about complete honesty for the time being. So they're going to want to take shortcuts and do what, you know, that kind of thing, because it's the devil, you know. So um, it, it can also be that they've got themselves into a certain situation because they've done what they knew they ought not to do. So Maybe that's all you think of at that moment. This is for you on your own, making notes. So let's say we pick another card because we don't want to deal with the devil anymore. And the next card, the Nine of Swords reversed. 
So this is what kind of atmosphere is the nine of swords reversed? It's the middle of the night. You wake. You've had a, a nightmare. It's possibly relief because you were having a nightmare, but then you wake up and you realize it was just a nightmare. So your heart's pounding. So it's an atmosphere of maybe relief, but also you've just been through a difficult situation and you're still caught up in the past experience. So you haven't quite settled down. So you can be nervous or you can be a little bit on edge. So even cards that show peace of mind and tranquility, you can believe it, but you're not quite there yet. So it's as if you're one step before tranquility and peace of mind. A third card, the Ten of Batons upright. So we've got this fellow. What's the atmosphere? It's one of determination. He's got, he's carrying his burdens, he's carrying the batons, and he's going in a certain direction, and he's almost there, but he's not going to stop. He's, his determination is going to see him through to the end. Even if he can't quite see where he's going, he's not going to stop. He's going to keep moving. So there's a sort of um, a kind of force of nature happening as well, or can be happening as well, where your momentum just keeps you going. So you're not you, you you're not going to feel like giving up, and you're not going to feel like quitting. You're just going to keep going. I'm thinking of the time, and I should probably stop at this point. So those are this is. Card one, the Celtic Cross. The atmosphere is surrounding the question. Um, and that's kind of it. The new site that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago is coming along. Um, uh, it'll, it should be ready in a week or so, but I'm making new content rather than just reusing what I already have. So next is going to be the Celtic Cross card two, and it should be posted next Sunday, the 1st of March, all going well. So I'll see you then. If you have comments or questions, leave a note down below or send me an email. Um, otherwise, have a good week and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.